March 18th, 1972. I was in my second year in college and Leonard Cohen was playing at the National Boxing Stadium on the South Circular Road in Dublin. And I had a ticket to the early show, the first of two that evening. Concerts were concerts back then. I don't think the word gig had entered my vocabulary. And this would be my second ever proper student concert. The first had been the Freshmen's Peace on Earth performance at the RDS in Dublin in November 1970, which I'd attended with my friend Pat Clowry. The National Stadium was an entirely different kind of venue. Built in 1939, by the 70s it had its own shabby down at heel atmosphere that reeked with the echoes of the musicians who had played there, from Genesis to Led Zeppelin to The Who. For me, as a teenager stepping through its doorway for the first time, it was a magical place where anything was possible. I sat enthralled through Leonard's initial performance. He began with So Long Marianne, moved into Bird on the Wire, and the fourth song he sang that night was Kevin Barry. It brought the house down. Leonard introduced the song by clarifying that he didn't, quote, wish to burden you here with another war, another cause, but there are struggles in other places and they all amount to the same thing. That is, men of 18 and 19 getting killed. And this is one from Ireland, unquote. This was 1972 when the conflict in Northern Ireland was escalating. By the end of that year, 479 people would have been killed. I was involved in the official Republican movement at the time, but I was struck by Leonard's phrase, getting killed. It was a far cry from my romantic notion of an heroic death. A couple of songs later, he sang another cover, The Partisan, and then a third, a song I'd never heard before, Richard Blakesley's Astonishing and Moving Passing Through. The song would appear in 1973 on the Live Songs album. To my delight, Hey That's No Way to Say Goodbye made an appearance close to the end of the show, and the concert concluded with another unexpected song. Leonard prefaced it by saying, there's so much dogmatic information about who you should be and what you should be. And a long time ago, somebody wrote this song. And then he quietly moved into As Time Goes By. And with that, the show was over. The audience began to leave the National Stadium, making way for the incoming enthusiasts, who were already queuing for the second performance of the evening. More than anything, I wanted to see and hear Leonard again, to relive the exhilaration I'd just been through. There were no guarantees about the future, much less about Leonard Cohen ever returning to this island. I hung about inside the stadium door, wondering how I could wheedle my way into remaining for the second show. And then, like an angel of the Lord, a fellow student at UCD, Luigi Ray, appeared from behind one of the catering wagons. His parents' company were doing the in-house catering for both shows. I explained my predicament, and in a couple of minutes I had been seconded onto their staff and got to see Leonard a second time from my place at the side of the catering chaos. And then we move on to the last concert. <clears throat> we had moved house and were in the throes of decorating, buying furniture, settling into a new life and paying a mortgage, something neither of us had been burdened with for more than a decade. Money was tight, and when Leonard's concerts were announced at the O2 Arena in September, we sat down and looked at the financial situation and decided we'd have to pass on that particular outing. On a warm morning in July 2013, I turned on my computer to find a mail from Leonard, asking me to contact Mike Scoble, his tour manager, to arrange complimentary tickets for Angela and myself for the September show. I have no idea what kind of intuitive affinity made Leonard get in touch, but suddenly and out of the blue, we were going to see him on September 12th. Gratitude doesn't describe the feeling we had, and I'm sure our new neighbours wondered about the whooping and yelling that escaped through the open summer windows. The concert in Dublin was charged with anticipation and enthusiasm. None of us who were there knew whether this would be Leonard's last Irish show, but there was a palpable sense an intuitive folk consciousness that it might be the time and the place to say thanks and adieu. As it happens, Leonard went on stage that night with renewed energy and with the ambition of there being at least one further tour before he called it a day. 
whatever our collective intentions were in bidding farewell, they were absolutely not Leonard's. The seats we'd been assigned were the best we'd ever had. As we sat waiting for the show to begin, I couldn't help thinking about that night more than forty years earlier, when I'd stood at the side of the food van in the National Stadium and chanced my arm to see Leonard a second time. People say the Kilmainham gigs were special, and they were. Sligo had its own beautiful magic, but for me, and this is not written in the glow of hindsight, that night in September 2013 had an atmosphere I had never experienced at a Leonard concert. And it wasn't simply about this perhaps being the last time we'd see and hear him. The concert was too full, too lively, too musically and lyrically driven to allow that possibility to dominate. There was an energy that spoke of life and love and living and dancing and listening and hearing new things in the old ideas, new views in the old pictures and new wonders in the breath of the songs, from Dance Me to the End of Love to the last extraordinary notes of Save the Last Dance for Me. The night began and ended with dances as life does. The dance of birth to, as Jackson Brown wrote, the dance we all must do alone. For almost four hours, the life of one man spooled out before us. The darkness, the healing, the fire, the leaving, the secret life and the closing time. And when he sang Save the Last Dance for Me, he stood back from the microphone beaming while the audience sang Leonard, Save the last dance for me. You can dance, ever dance with the guy who gives you the eye and let him hold you tight. You can smile, ever smile with the man who held your head beneath the pale blue light. But don't forget his taste. That the music's fine like sparkling wine won't ever fall. Let us sing while we're apart. Don't give your heart to anyone. And don't forget to stay in your home. If it was not your only. So dark, say the last dance for me. Don't you know I love you so? Can't you feel it when we touch? I will never, never let you know I love you oh so much. You can dance, go and carry on till the night is gone and it's time to go. But if he asks, if you're all alone, can you walk him home? You must tell him. So oh.